Over the last eight years, I've helped hundreds of thousands of professionals and job seekers land more interviews and better job offers using one powerful tool, LinkedIn. Just ask Eric who applied for 10 positions and scored interviews with all 10 companies or Heather who landed interviews with nearly every company she applied to and secured a job offer well above her salary expectations. And then we can't forget about Josh who received interview requests nonstop and landed a new role with a $50,000 annual salary increase. In this episode, I'm revealing the seven best LinkedIn profile tips to transform your profile from basic to brilliant in just minutes. Whether you're looking to attract recruiters, grow your network, or showcase your expertise, these tips will help you stand out instantly. And stick around because I have a brand new LinkedIn checklist that will guide you step-by-step in creating a stand out profile that captures attention and sets you apart from your competition. Hey, if you're new here, I'm Heather Austin, a university professor turned entrepreneur, and I love turning complex job search tasks into simple, actionable strategies that you can use right away. So if you're ready to dive in, make sure you tap that like button and subscribe to this channel if you're tuning in on YouTube. And for our podcast listeners, a quick rating and review on your favorite podcast platform would mean the world to us. I want to jump into the seven key components of an optimized LinkedIn profile. So we always, always, always start with our professional profile photo. Now, a lot of you I know have already uploaded an amazing photo, which is great. I'm going to share a couple tips with you as we are going through each of these sections. So write this down because I don't have a separate a separate screenshot for these. It needs to be a clear photo. It needs to be something that's recent. It needs to be high quality. Make sure it's perfect professional, make sure you're smiling, make sure we can see your eyes. We don't want it too far back. I would always recommend something from the elbow up, something where we can see you. And then of course, some sort of plain or neutral background. And I'm not opposed to having like some nature in the background, but I want you to be present in that photo. So that's always going to be the very first thing that we nail down when it comes to the LinkedIn profile. Now, the next thing is our industry specific headline and just some general guidelines when it comes to your headline. It needs to be compelling. It needs to contain keywords and keyword phrases, and it needs to be tailored to your unique skills. I'll show you all of that in just a second. The other part to an optimized LinkedIn profile, of course, is your catchy about summary. Now, the about summary is probably one of the most overlooked pieces of a LinkedIn profile. In all my courses and my programs, I teach you how to really craft an amazing about summary. We're not going to get into all the details of the about summary, but one thing I want you to remember is it needs to express your strengths, your achievements. It needs to tell a really good story and it needs to basically tell your viewers or other professionals on LinkedIn who you are and how you help them, right? And then of course, there's a certain character limit and inside of our programs, we have templates and I give you step-by-step guidance on exactly how to do this, but just know that that's part of this optimization. Now, the next part to this is a detailed work history. The detailed work history is going to be similar to what you have on your resume, but because it's LinkedIn, you can speak in first person. So you can make it more casual. You can make it more personable. You can add more character to it. You can add a lot more to the work section on LinkedIn than you can on a resume. And I'm not saying more as in more data, more information. I'm saying more personality and more character. And of course, it's going to look very similar to what your resume looks like. The other part to your LinkedIn profile is, of course, any sort of education and certifications. Why is this important? Why is it important for me to add these to my profile, education or certifications. Well, if we're adding it, it's showing the employer, the recruiter, the industry professional that you're taking action to do things that are related to the industry, that you are adaptable, that you can go grab a certification or learn a a certification that applies to your industry. And of course, if you don't have a formal education or you don't have a certification, I would highly, highly, highly recommend finding something in your industry that you can start now in terms of some sort of additional training that shows that you're really interested in the industry and that you are adaptable. The next part of this is our relevant skills and endorsements. When it comes to the skills section, I want you to add only the skills that you want to be known for right now. Let me back up because I don't want to say only those skills because you're going to have a couple other skills there. But when you're ranking your skills, when someone goes to your profile, they can only see two of your skills. You need to make sure that those are the most 
relevant skills and that's what you want to start getting endorsed for. That has to be on your skills page. Now, again, inside of my programs, I teach you how to ask people for endorsements, how to endorse other people. And of course, we dive deeper into the skills section. Recently, LinkedIn, they have a really big push if you haven't noticed on skills-based recruiting. So what that means is a recruiter is going to go to LinkedIn and they are going to search for a a specific person based on their skills. Well, the only way that they know if you have those skills is if you've included it on your profile in some way. So there's a lot we could go through with the skills section, but just know you want to include those skills that you wanna be known for, keyword specific skills, get very specific with those skills. Don't just say leadership. What type of leadership? Don't just say management. What type of management? Let's get really specific with what those skills are. And then of course, we want your connections to start endorsing you. Now we have influential recommendations. So this is where someone is writing a recommendation for you, vouching for who you are and what your talents, your expertise, your skills. They're saying, hey, I know that Alan is amazing at this. I'm going to write a recommendation for Alan or for Dustin or for Angela, whoever it might be, telling others on LinkedIn how great I think they are. Now, inside of our programs, I also have resources for you where there's templates that you can ask someone to write a recommendation for you. You can even type up the recommendation in a draft form for them so that they can quickly look at it, change a couple things and post it to your profile. So we want this to be as simple and seamless as possible. So these are the seven sections of your LinkedIn profile that must be optimized. This is another visual that just shows what you need to optimize on your LinkedIn profile. Profile photo, headline, which I'm going to share some tips with you on the headline, the about section, the experience, education and training or certifications of some sort, your skills and endorsements and your recommendations. So make sure you guys are working on these sections if you are in the process of optimizing your profile. So quick question for you, what part of your LinkedIn profile needs the most work? Comment below this video or DM me on LinkedIn to let me know you made it this far in the episode. Also, I have a special link for you below this video or in the show notes of this podcast episode so that you can grab your free LinkedIn checklist that will guide you step by step in creating a standout profile that captures attention and sets you apart from your competition. And if you found this episode helpful, don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you're on YouTube or to this podcast if you're a podcast listener. And of course, take just a few minutes to give us a and leave us a review and I'll see you in the next episode.